If we don't slam dunk this thing, it's going to look like we're not trying. I'm not an idiot, Sheldon. I've got every available man on the case. No, you don't. Mayor wants you to bring in your old friend. Monk? I still can't believe this. The mayor asked for you personally. Okay, there's a boss on the right. Oh, this is great. This is going to get you back in the force, I'm telling you. I already have a job, remember? The girl in Santa Clara merging, merging, every place. You, you want to drive? What lane are you in? You want to drive? I'll sit there and yell and point and drive you nuts, because you're driving me nuts, okay. Adrian. All right. I'm sorry. It's red! It's red! Come on! It's red! Be cool. No, no, not today. No, no, you can't today. Look who's here, the defective detective. Hello, Monk. Captain. Sharona. Lieutenant. Hi. You look good. Dr. Kroger says you've been getting out some. Oh, he is really doing great. I can't even keep up with him, thanks. Excellent. Well, the candidate is waiting for us upstairs. I want to make this crystal clear. You're here because the mayor thinks you can walk on water, but you're a civilian now, Monk. You have observer status only. Okay, when I'm in there, you, I talk, you say nothing. Understand? Look, Monk, when I took your badge three years ago, I told you nothing would give me more pleasure than to see you reinstated, and I meant that. But you're obviously not ready. Is that you talking or the uniform? I am the uniform, Monk. You didn't understand that back when I was your watch commander. Now, you just stay out of my way, and we'll be fine. Yes, sir. Uh, and I'm sure you and Karen will work things out. What did you say? You and your wife, you, you're having some problems. What are you talking about? Karen and I are fine. We're 100%. Yes, sir. My mistake. Uh, never been happier to be wrong. Hey, Monk. Come here. How did you know that? You missed a spot shaving. Karen would have caught that. And your necktie, she always ties it for you. She uses that double slip knot. Conclusion, you dressed yourself. And uh, Ramada in cup. You know, send her some roses, maybe. Ignore it. Just ignore it. He'll stop eventually. He has to sleep. What's his name? Ambrose. What does he do? He writes instruction manuals for blenders and toaster ovens. He lives in Tewksbury. He lives 10 minutes away? Mm hmm Well, if you don't pick up the phone, he's just going to come over. No. He can't. He never leaves the house. He has agoraphobia. I told you, he's... When was the last time you spoke to him? About four years ago. Maybe five. Was it four or five? Six. Seven. Look, he didn't come to Trudy's funeral. But you just said that. He can't leave the house. He never called or wrote not one word. Did you call him? Yes, a hundred times. Never picked up the phone. Maybe he's calling to apologize. It's too late. I don't need him. Well, I think you do. Don't think, don't talk. Hello? Is this Ambrose? Hi, hi. I've heard so much about you. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Ho just hold on one sec. He wants you to come right over. He says it's very important. I don't care! He says it's life or death. Wow, this is where you grew up? Are you surprised? No, I just always picture something different. Like what? I don't know. Like a laboratory. Is that him? Okay, let's go. What? I waved at him. He waved at me. That's enough for one decade. Adrian, you can't leave. He's your brother. Come on. Hello, Adrian. 
sleep again? Yeah, bros. Oh, this is my assistant, Sharona. Oh, hi. Hello, we spoke on the phone. Oh, so you can dial the telephone. I was worried. Thought you might be paralyzed or something. I wasn't paralyzed. I was being sarcastic. You were being sardonic. Sarcasm is a contemptuous, ironic statement. You were being mockingly derisive. That's sardonic. Please, come in. Measuring. It says eight feet. Stay back. You know, they, they mean approximately. No, no. It doesn't say approximately. You have to trust the label makers. They're professional label makers. Give me that. Wait a second. You're too close. Are you okay? We did it. I'm gonna write these people a letter. We could have been killed. I should say approximately. Are you Monk? Yeah. Adrian Monk? Right. The detective. The famous, admired, respected detective? If you still want the job, we can go talk in the kitchen. What job? Aren't you here from the agency? No. I came here to hire you. I'm Natalie Teeger. Captain. Stolemeyer said that you might be able to help me. No. Oh. He said you're the best cop he's ever met. I guess he's never seen you put out a fire. Well, I'm sorry, but um, I'm not really taking any work right now. I recently lost a dear friend. Oh, I'm so sorry. Who died? Nobody died. My nurse quit. The captain said you might change your mind. Okay, look, I can, I can pay you. I'm not rich, but I can borrow money if no. I have to. I could take out a, a loan. I can't. Um, I just... I can't. There was a man in my house last night. I killed him. There was another man in my house a couple of days ago. They're after something. I can't figure it out. Nobody can. Do you have kids? No. Yeah, I do. I have an 11-year-old daughter. Mr. Monk, I don't say this very often. But I'm scared. Yeah, look. Hey, please, help me. Please, help us. Mr. Monk discovered that he loved that little prince. So realized the little prince could never live happily ever after if he stayed at Mr. Monk's house. Because Mr. Monk can barely take care of himself. So they're gonna have to say goodbye. Wait, wait, wait. Where did you go? Wait, hey, wait. 
Hello. Hi. Hi. This is the couple I told you about. This is Hank and Lisa Murphy. Hi. Hi. Let him get dirty. Kids should get dirty. We will. OK. OK, then. Goodbye. Ambrose, about our date. Is Freddie okay? No, Natalie, that's okay. You don't have to. You, you thought I was dying. I'll be here Friday. Hey, look, there's a note. Stop by. Nobody home. Can't blame you. I wouldn't wait for me either. Dad. P.S. Ambrose, I'm proud of you for getting out of the house. He said he was proud of me? He'll be back? I don't know. I think he'll be back. Maybe we should, uh, go inside. Let's go inside. It's better. You trust me, don't you? I love you. And you love me, say it. I love you. I'll meet you in the bedroom. long time for this. What about our honeymoon? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. That was magical. Sit down right here. You put your hands like this. Now lean in.
Trudy. The name's Cora. I'm sorry. I'm remembering something. Uh, there's a woman. I, I think I'm having an affair with a woman named Trudy. I forgive you. Yeah, I think I love her. I don't care. The truth is, I'm, I'm not so attracted to you. Whatever. The truth is, um, you sort of terrify me. Hey, there's no such thing as a perfect marriage. Right. All right, look, this is my fault. It's too much pressure. Let's, let's get out of here. We'll be spontaneous. He didn't kill Trudy, he killed a woman named Michelle. Oh! A woman named Michelle. Come, and a pawnbroker named Orloff. Yes, that's the truth. I killed a woman, and I killed an old man. I've never even met Trudy. Who the hell is Trudy? She was my life! Shh. She was my life! Adrian! Okay, listen, what? Me. listen to me. I... Trudy wouldn't want you to do this, would she? She wouldn't want you to do this. No. No, no. Not Trudy. No, she wouldn't. No. I know. I know. That's okay. I know. That's okay. I know. It's okay. I know. I know. That's okay. I know. It's okay. I know. I know. It's just... It's all right. It's over now. I'm sorry. I just... I just... That day, she wanted me to go with her. And... What? What was She what? wanted me to go with her that day. And I. No. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she did. It's my fault. It's my fault. That I was tired and... That's right, she... That's true. I'm sorry. I should have... Saved her. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm my sorry. God. I'm sorry. Oh, Trudy. Trudy. Oh, my God. Trudy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that must have been a traumatic experience for you, Adrian. And what, they, they canceled the, the movie? He said he wanted to play a character who wasn't so dark and depressing. He's in England doing Hamlet. Mr. Monk. Nevin Bell, I've been looking forward to this. Wipe. Summit Creek. That's your brand, isn't it? Right there. Glass, exactly. There you go. Half filled. Or would you call it half empty? Hmm? <laughs> Where did you get that painting? I love that piece. It's from Charles Kroger's office. I asked Madeline if I could have it. Huh. It doesn't look right in here. I miss him, too. Are you okay? Just tired. Of... I haven't been sleeping. Hmm. All right, then we uh... Why don't we start right there, then? Uh, hmm? Why haven't you been sleeping? Uh, no big mystery. This girl who's across the street plays piano. Same song. Doesn't matter, really. Doesn't, doesn't matter. I'm out of there. I'm moving. I just, I just bought a house. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Hmm. So when did it start? The piano playing. I don't know, about a year ago. Hmm. But it's only been bothering you for, what, five weeks? How did you know that? Oh, well, the girl's been playing piano for a year, 
And it's only been bothering you since Charles Kroger passed. What? No. And no. Well, oh, come on. The no. music she's playing is Chopin. Charles loves Chopin. He played in his waiting room all the time. Uh, uh, Maybe the music is reminding you of, of your friend and it's it's been affecting you. Hmm? No. No, no, no. No. Huh? That's, huh? that's Maybe. not that's just crazy. Ah, it's yeah, crazy talk. Yeah. I mean. Well, Adrian, now I know we've just met. But for what it's worth, I don't think you should be buying a house right now. I can't believe this. I think maybe you're buying this property to avoid dealing with the loss of your friend. Okay. I, what's the rush? Wait a few weeks, maybe a year. Yeah. My, my second wife, she was in real estate. You know, lots of her clients. Different Can I tell I, you what I think? Please. I don't think this is working out. I'm sorry. I just don't feel comfortable. And um, I'm going to be looking for a different therapist. Well, <clears throat> I'm really sorry to hear that, Adrian. I really am. Yeah. So. I thought you were leaving. I, I can't leave early. Natalie would kill me. Hmm. All right. Well, then, I guess. Then we'll just sit. Hmm? <clears throat> The case was broken by former detective Adrian Monk, who ironically had recently been featured on Mr. Novak's news magazine program, In Focus. Look, picture. Very nice. <laughs> nice to go out on a high note. What do you mean, go out? Well, I think it might be time to quit. A hundred cases, a hundred even. It's a nice round number. Wait, wait. You want to quit because it's an even number? Makes sense to me. That is so stupid. I'm sorry, Mr. Mike, but that is just stupid. What are you doing? Rolling up this newspaper. I wonder why. To hit you over the head with it because you're so stupid. And I have enough. Come on, come on, come on. Wait, wait a minute. When you caught that serial killer, that was number 100. Right. Right, right, right. So this case with this TV host, this was a completely different case. Different killer, different case. Oh, my God. <laughs> so you're at 101. Oh, my God. God, how did this happen? You want to stop at a nice round number? You have to get to 200. 200. <laughs> All right, so you better get started. Let's see if anybody's killed anybody today. Ooh, this looks good. Suspicious drowning. 101. Oh, God. Why didn't you stop me? Oh, runaway truck kills too. Oh, social aid killed by giant pendulum. That's juicy. Billionaire's mistress disappears. Woman run over by a golf cart. That's yeah. Here. TV writer found dead after contract dispute. Creepy. <laughs> All right, Detective Monk, what now? Dig! <laughs> now, I think both of us are going to be dead by morning. Dig! Uh, not there. Oh, over there. By the sundial. Over there. Let's go. <laughs> go on. Go on. <coughs> oh, no, 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 take Finn. What the hell, are you crazy? It's left. I gotta go left. I got it all tore up. Go left, go left, go left. Go left. Step on it, step on it, step on it. Squad car's over here. Monk's gonna get himself shot. What the hell? Look out. <laughs> Come on, come on! Pull the truck, pull this emergency! Come on, come on! Guess we got a siren. <laughs> hey, keep digging! Sir, I'm not gonna tell you again. I want you to put the weapon down. Oh, we're not done yet. <laughs> I'm going to bring up a, a sore subject here. I don't want you to overreact, but Trudy and I used to talk about capital punishment all the time. She never believed shut in it. Shut up! You shut it! You mentioned her name again. Be the last word you ever say. Oh, God, okay. Stottlemyre homicide, you guys just relax. Everyone, everybody take a deep breath. Relax, hold your fire. Okay, that's close enough. Monk. Monk, put the gun down, buddy. You don't want to do this. Uh, you don't have to do this. Hey! Who told you to stop? 
Keep going. Keep going. Monk, Monk, listen to me. They've identified the poison. It was on your wipes, Monk. It was on your hand wipes. They have the antidote. We have to get you to a hospital. We can figure out what to do with him later. <laughs> what was that? That is Wendy Stroud. The midwife from 12 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> Bones. The human skull. Uh, couldn't figure out why he wouldn't move. It's CSI down here now. And then I remembered a sundial <laughs> under the tree. Why would anyone put a sundial under a big tree like this in the shade? It didn't make any sense. <laughs> Twelve years ago, when he was nominated for the federal bench, his name was in all the favors. <coughs> Wendy Stroud must have seen it, right? Right! She said she found Jesus, that she was born again. She uh, couldn't live with the guilt. She was going to tell everyone about me and Trudy and the child. So you killed her. And then Trudy. And for what? For nothing! Monk. Monk, Monk. For a job! Monk, for don't! A job. Don't! For... <laughs> job. Hey, hey, Rick, I'm put the gun down! No, no! You take care of her! Star. You are to me. That was good, too. What do you do with all these pictures, anyway? I'm making scrapbooks. I've already filled four of them. You want to see them? Maybe when I get back. Back from where? I have to go to Toronto, the film festival. Oh, yeah. What, what, what film festival? The Toronto Film Festival. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I go every year. I won't be gone long. Oh, thank God. Just two weeks. Whoa, whoa, wait, okay, wait. Wait, yeah, two, two weeks. Okay. Okay, I'll come with you. I can do Canada. I went there once with your mother. What about your job? I don't have a job. I'm retired. Since when? Since you. Since you and me. Since us. I thought you were broke. No, I'll be fine. I can live for 20 years if I don't eat or pay rent or pay Natalie, <laughs> right? <laughs> Adrian, you can't quit. What would you do all day? Oh, this. Hang around with you. I just want to watch you grow up. I'm 26 years old. I'm not a kid. I just want you in my life, you know? I, I need you in my life. I am in your life. I'm not going anywhere. I'm worried about your life. You can't quit. Not for me. And there are lots of other Trudys out there, and I think you're obligated to help them. You have a gift. And a curse. It's not a curse, it's a gift. Can't you see that? Maybe that's why I'm here. To remind you. Huh. <laughs> what? That's exactly what your mother used to say. Really? What was she like? Well, she snored. <laughs> she did? Yeah. She never believed me. One night I taped her with a tape recorder. She still didn't believe it. She loved Willie Nelson. When she was thinking, she'd stick out her tongue like this. Oh my God, I do that all the time. I know. I love it when you do that.